wife. Thank you. She is so special. I don't, I don't give her enough recognition sometimes. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you just for, I'm not going to have a nervous breakdown like last Sunday. But I do want to say thank you because you stand by my side. And you're everything that God said a man should have as a help me. You meet me where I am and help me to go further than what I am. You didn't get that, did you? You meet me where I am, but you help me to go further than what I am. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say something to the people? <clears throat> he blessed me. Yes. Yeah, if I could sing, I would just take it on in. But I just want to say I love all of you. God bless you. I thank God for all that he's doing in your life. He is still the most awesomest God ever because he keeps on blessing us over and over again. He is the one that carries us through our hard times. He carries us through our good times. He carries us through when the enemy tries to attack us. He lets us know he's there for us. So whatever you're going through in life, you can trust God. You can depend on him. He'll always be. All you have to do is call his name. When you, listen, when you can't think of what to say, just call Jesus. He's the all-sufficient God, the great I am that I am, wonderful way maker, prince of peace, everlasting to everlasting, my hope of glory. And I am so grateful for all that he has done. And, and thank God for putting me with this man of God for 51 years. I love him. Listen, I've been with him practically all my life because I'm just a little bit over 50. But I've been with him almost 56 years uh, So we dated before we got married, four years and eight months. So it's almost 56 years. So I am so excited, so grateful. He's the love of my life. He has not changed. He's still the same. He's just getting better and better at what he's done Amen. for God. Amen. And I love you. And I want to thank you for my three children. I want to thank you. They are they are phenomenal. I just, they blessed us so good. The praise team was just awesome at the conference. I'm telling you, you missed it. All of the praise team, the life was awesome. Redeeming life was awesome. We all came together. We all were awesome. The praise was just off the chain. And we just thank God. The word was wonderful. And I'm telling you, the next time the eagle soar, you make sure you're there when we soar because the eagles are continuing to soar and do great things for God. God bless you all. Love you and look forward to seeing you on next Sunday. Friends and family, invite your friends and family app. Everybody to go out to Church Center app and register. If you're inviting somebody, you need to let us know so that we can have sufficient enough food to feed everybody. I don't want to have to come out and pray over the food and multiply it you tell us in time, I won't have to do that. Amen. But if that's necessary, we will because we want you to more, get more than one hot dog if you want to. Amen. And so we're going to have water slide. We need people popcorn, cotton candy, snow corn machine, chicken, fish. Oh my God, we're going to do the cookout, cookout style. So tell your friends and family, come on out and let's have a good time fellowshipping together. Amen. 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 I'm just teasing. <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Thanks to God. <clears throat> thank God for my wife and thank God for my children. I don't say that enough as I, I should. I get, I get so many compliments about what God is doing in my children. Um, they just don't know how that came about through a lot of prayer, a lot of interceding, a lot of staying on my face but always training and sometimes walking alone. But here's what I know about God. God is faithful to his word. He's faithful to his word. He will not deny the outcome of your prayer. If you pray with faith and believe that God is able to do it and hold that to your heart that he can do it, then you'll see the manifestation of that. Let me tell you why. Because God's word is inspirational, but it's 
it, when you use the word of God and you pray, it goes from being inspirational to manifestation. See, the manifestation comes through the inspiration, but the inspiration has to be applied. And when you apply the word of God, now you see the manifestation of your prayers. We give up too, too soon before we see the manifestation. But I thank God that he held my feet to the fire to constantly intercede for my children. And God has done the work that I could not do. Because my work, uh, uh, Joe, my working at this, me working at this with the kind of man I am, I would have had a prison ministry about 30 years ago. Because raising kids is not always easy. And not when you're raising boys. Because they get to a certain age, they feel like they're a man. And two men have to come together. And I thought some years ago that I was going to have a prison ministry. Because one of us couldn't stay here. And I knew who was going to be God if we ever came face to face. But then when I look at him now, Joe, I don't do that. I don't talk like that. I say, yes, sir. I ran into him one day and bumped him, and he pushed me out of the way, just bumping into him. I said, ain't nobody dealing with him. <laughs> but I thank God for what God has done in these young men and in my daughters because it was prayer. And let me say this to everyone that's listening. Don't give up on God with your children. Just keep believing God and trusting God and keep staying in prayer for your children. If you raise them up in the right, right, right way they should go, the Bible says they will not depart from that way. Now, they'll go out there and test. Because, thanks to God, to get a testimony, you must go through a test. That's right. That's right. If you, you want a testimony, you're telling someone about your test that you went through. Because without the test, Joe, all you have is moaning. You, you're just moaning because you don't have a test. But when you go through the test, you have now a testimony. That's why you can say, I can look back over my life and think things over. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I can surely say, without a doubt, I have a testimony because I've gone through a test. So thanks to God. We go through tests quite often. And I don't know if any of y'all have ever failed a test. Do I have anyone here that failed the test? I mean, failed, just flat out failed the test. What did it do to you? It made you say, I'm going back to learn this lesson because I won't fail that test again. And now you have a testimony to tell you there was a lesson to be learned in that test. And now you can say, I remember when I took that class. I rem Come on, talk am I talking right? I remember that test, and my God, that test was hard. But the next time you took that test, you passed it. I got a deacon who told me one day, I called on him to do something concerning Bible study. And I put a question out there, and I called on him to answer that question. And I caught him off guard. He didn't give me what I was looking for. But you know what he told me? He said, that'll never happen again. Y'all have to come to a place where you say, this is not going to happen again. I'm, I'm ensuring that I will overcome what it is I'm going through because that won't happen again. Amen. So becoming a better you, that's what we're talking about. But before I go into the text, I want to honor... <clears throat> I was looking for Felicia, but I didn't see her in the service. So can I have a microphone, please? I want to thank all of you for supporting Redeeming Life Ministries and all the things that we have been called to do. We have been called to many funerals and still being called to funerals. People are still passing, and we're still sending out letters, and we're going to funerals and wakes, and we're seeing Redeeming Life Ministries there supporting we're going to conferences. We see Redeeming Life Ministry there supporting us. I want to say to all of you who are praying for us and, about and, and serving with us and representing the house, I truly want to say thank you for doing that. 
because my heart rejoices when I look around and see Redeeming Life Ministries in the house. And so I'm going to give the microphone to a person who's not expecting to receive this microphone. But I wanted that person to share their thoughts and appreciation for what God has done for that family, how the church has been there to support them. I'm going to give this microphone to a person who's not expecting it, but I'm going to give it to him because he needs to say something. In your own way, in your own words, on behalf of your family, speak to the people that have been there to support you and your family and to say thank you in your own way. Put, put it to you. I really would like to thank everyone who participated uh, in the ceremony last Wednesday for Christina. And uh, it was a lovely hang on it. It made us feel really, really good. But I would also like to say, she doesn't want me to say this. Christina Felicia is having a hard time uh, accepting what has happened. And as you notice, she hasn't showed up yet for the ceremony. I had a discussion with Barbara, and she was saying, well, some people need more time to accept what has happened. And I found that hard for me to comprehend, because uh, she almost stopped speaking to me. But I just took out, in my family, six, six of us, six children, mom, and dad, and everything. And I told her, look, my whole family's gone. I am the only one left. Just can't say, well, I'm not going to church. So I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. I say, when did you get ready? Especially if you're supposed to be a believer in Christ and God. And because all of us are going to leave here one day. I don't know why it's so hard, maybe I'm wrong, for her to come in and face the church. Because it's going to make her think about it. Her daughter. Well, the same down, down there, all the people in the church today. Was that the funeral? So I don't see what's the difference. You face them, okay, and you know, and you talk, and we got a lot and everything. I think it would help her to show up, but okay. The Bible thinks different. Thank you for sharing that, Joe. Everybody, put your hands towards this family. Put your hands. Put your hands before the family. You will have something you want to say? Okay. Um, good morning, church. I, I do want to say, I mean, interestingly enough, I was hoping to get this opportunity to do this. Um, as far as thanking the church. It's okay, Bob. Just want you to know we're there with you. I was thinking today about all the blessings that God has done for us. For us, our family. When I was thinking, as Bishop said, looking back, and I'm grateful that he gave us the opportunity just a couple of weeks ago for her to come home and see us. And this, these are the things that you look back and just say, thank you, Lord, because we hadn't seen Chrissy in a year. So we just I was just grateful looking back on that. And then for her to be able to come here for you all to see her again was just another blessing. So I was grateful. But on top of that, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you all. Because Redeemer Life showed up. I didn't see a lot of you all. As a matter of fact, I think I only remember seeing Deacon Greenwood as short as he is. 
<laughs> I'm just kidding, Dick. I'm just kidding. We have to throw some humor. But I know everyone was there. I was told who was there. And I'm so grateful. Deacon Sally was t told everybody, tell me he was there. <laughs> so thank you, Dick. I appreciate it. <laughs> but I also want to give a, a, a heartfelt thank you to Elder Sally. <laughs> so we had a private gathering after the service. We did not attend that, the repast, because our family really needed to heal in a different way. So Elder Sally came. And I want you all to know that she served. And it was just so, I was just so grateful to see her. She just, she just served. She got in with my girls and she was in the kitchen and I just love her. For, I already loved her, but it was just a double portion that I wanted to say thank you to her. I did already, but I wanted to publicly say to you all, it was just so heartfelt. And I'm just so grateful to my church. And I love you all so much. So thank you all so much for being there. And I just say keep Felicia in prayer. Because like I told my husband, everybody doesn't grieve the same. And this is her baby. And it's not to say that she won't ever come back to church. But right now, she has to do this her way, and I'm okay. She's going to church. She just can't right now. She can't do this. So just keep her in prayer, and I appreciate you all so much. God bless you. Thank you. Put your hands this way, thanks to God. The Spirit of the Lord told me to let them release because there is a, there is a, <clears throat> everyone does not grieve the same way. Yeah, we, my wife is just reminded we have other folk that have deaths in the family. And thanks to God, I feel like I'm going in one door and going into another door and then going into another door. <clears throat> but, you know, this is part of the journey is to walk through this with, with people. And so put your hands this way. Father, we pray for this family in the name of Jesus. They are going through the passing of a loved one, but we know your grace is sufficient for them. Now, Father, as they grieve, for weeping will endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And we pray for their morning of joy. Comfort them, O oh Lord God. Be that refuge for them. Be that strength for them and a present help for them in this time and season of transition. We pray for Felicia, especially the mother that God shall comfort her, strengthen her on this journey. Father, it's hard for parents to bury their children. So God, we understand, but we know God, you have all the answers. What we don't have, God, you have more than enough. Now bless her, oh God. Keep all of them in perfect peace as they keep their mind stayed upon you. We honor you and we thank you. Now God, we pray for Sister Lou who has just lost her dad, that, Father, we are praying once again that you uphold the family, strengthen them in this hour. What they have to go through, Lord God, give them the strength, give them the endurance to be able to handle this season of their lives. And we pray, Father in heaven, that when this is all over, we hear those words, well done, God, good and faithful servant. For we have been faithful of a few things, and you'll make us rulers over many. We honor you and give you the praise, God, in Jesus' name. And as Cheryl and Elder Walden are there in, in up north, Father, bearing her father, we pray, Father, for the strength of God to walk with their family. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and glorify the Lord. You know, death makes us sad. It does. It, it makes us sad. And there's a, 
there's a kind of spirit that comes over us when we sense people suffering and hurting. But I understand what happens when you call the assembly together to pray. It's a strength in the corporate assembly that's different than individual prayers. This is why I gave them the opportunity to say what they wanted to say so that we as a people could join them and walk this out with them, praying for them along the way. How many all understand what I'm saying? You're not in this world by yourself and you can't walk things out by yourself. You need the strength of others. See, because iron sharper than iron, meaning brothers taking interest in other brothers and helping them when they're down so we can help you carry the load. Amen? So we pray for those and others who are going through that we stand with them in prayer. Amen? Well, let me turn your attention to the message today. I'm just of the place now, thanks of God. I just want to do what the Lord wants me to do. You know, I, I just want to do what he says do, when he says it, and how he says it. And so when people are hurting, we need to stop, and we need to minister. Amen? When people are hurting, we need to stop and minister the grace of God upon them so that they can move forward. They got to keep moving. See, when a person dies, it, mean, it mean, doesn't mean you die. It means you celebrate that life. But sometimes it's hard to celebrate when you're in pain and when it's hurting. So the purpose for all this is to encourage them to know that God is still with them. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. I see some great folk in the audience today. I can't call you all by name because I'm afraid I'm going to miss someone. But I do see you. God bless you. Good to see you in the house today. Philadelphia, thank you for being in the house today. I see you. <laughs> I see you. Thank you for being in the house today. Amen. So let's go to the scripture, and then I will try to wrap this up, which I know I won't finish only because of the time, and I know how you all y'all focus on time. Okay, Matthew 11, 28, verse 30. We're still talking about becoming the better you, all right? If you stand for the reading of the word, <clears throat> you can be seated at the conclusion of the reading. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. The word of God says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest upon your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to bring your attention to the topic, Becoming the Better You. This is part six. This is a good series, thanks to God. And I'm telling you, the more I deposit, the more the Lord gives me. And it seems like this thing is growing because God is saying something about you. And he doesn't want you to miss this opportunity. Becoming the better you. There is a process in becoming the better you. And it's a daily process. And it's called opportunity. You have opportunity to become a better you or become a worse. It's all based on choices. So Jesus is saying to us, I want you to become a better you, but to become a better you, you got to learn your purpose in life because this is what I created you for. I found out that in my purpose is my greatest strength because in my purpose is my destiny. And a lot of times I'm doing things in regards to destiny and missing my purpose. And if I ask the average person today, what is their purpose? They would say, I don't know. What's your passion in life? Well, I'm passionate about many things, but what's your purpose? So walking with God, he said, come to me, all ye that are laboring. And listen, I'm going to show you some things which you don't know. I'm going to reveal to you who you really are. I've been in many conferences, and some of the questions I ask, do you know who you are? Well, I know my name, but do you know who you are? Every day I'm discovering the who that's in me. And then I'm discovering the what and the why. Because until you discover the why, you'll never know the what. And so I see God every day concerning the word of God because the word of God is purpose to do something in my life. It was written for purpose. It is the inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and correction and righteousness. And it is for the man of God to be perfect. Second, second Timothy 3, 16 and 17, you'll find that. It says that the man of God can be perfect. And he can be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Why? Because God wants us to enjoy the abundant life for which we were created for. We don't find satisfaction in doing many of the things that we don't enjoy. 
and I'm figuring out, well, what makes me happy? Well, my choices do. The choices that you make will make you happy based on how you use judgment in making those decisions. If you make the wrong choice, you're not happy at the outcome. Amen, somebody. Amen. So choices are very important. So he's saying, before you make choices, come to me, learn. I could, if I had to go back and do things over, and many people say I would do it differently. I don't think I'm going to go back and do it differently because the things I learned helped me to become what I am now. So I'm not, I'm not resentful of what I went through. I, it, got, it, it taught me lessons so I can understand how to share those lessons with people now so that they don't go through a lot of things that's unnecessary. Tell your neighbor, stop going through things that's unnecessary. Come on, tell them, tell them, y'all don't say it right. Say, stop going through things that's unnecessary. Say, look at me. I know something. I think I can pour into your life. Now, are you willing to listen? Now, some of y'all looking at me and you said a word. But I told you to talk to your neighbor. Why? Because somebody needs to talk to you. And you need to have an outlet to talk to somebody else. So the scripture is saying, come to me and labor. Come to me who are laboring with your life because your life means something to God. He says, my yoke is easy. In other words, God wants to yoke up with you. How does he yoke up you, with you? Through the word of God. You know, I taught at the conference this week, and I talked to him about the inspiration and the manifestation. I talked to him about the word of God, what the word of God really is. The word of God written as it is written in the Bible, it is called logos. It is just a written word. And all that is is information. It's information about what God wants you to know. But listen, you don't get the revelation of that until you activate that word in your life. So it goes from being inspiration to be inspired by God to go and now enjoy the manifestation of God. Because God's word put into action is demonstrating who he is. How do you know who he is? What have you seen in your life that's been manifested? You can say, this is God because I applied the principle according to the information. See, God's word alone is just information. That's why people can quote the scriptures. It's information. But guess what? You can quote a scripture and information and be just as wrong because you don't have the revelation. So if you don't get the revelation, you can miss, miss, you can miss the, the opportunity that God has set for you based on what his word said it would produce in you. So you can't just read it just for information. You've got to get in some teaching, get under somebody. Hello, I know that's hard for some people. Who's smarter than me? Why am I getting under somebody? Who know more than I do? Oh, listen, there are a lot of folks that are smarter than you. I'm one of them. No, I'm just missing. I, no, I just must. I'm just missing. I do have some things to share with you, but you know, you have to choose and pick and choose how you're going to live your life. But, but Jesus is saying, your life, listen, saints, your life has already been charted by God. Your destiny is in your purpose. See, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know my thoughts. This is God talking. He says, I know my thoughts about you. And my thoughts about you are never evil. But my thoughts about you are good. To bring you to an expected end. Guess what? God has an expectation for your life, even if you don't. He has an expectation, Joe, for your life, even if you don't. So this is what he says. Now, come unto me. See, if he says come, that doesn't mean sit still. He means come. What does he mean come? Come and sit under. Thanks to God, if you're going to learn the word of God, you've got to get under the word of God. You've got to get under the teaching so that you can get the right interpretation of the scriptures so that you don't be one who's going out here eisegesing the scriptures, trying to say, Lord, have mercy, trying to say what the scriptures mean but not having the proper relationship with the scriptures because you don't know what the scriptures mean because you don't have a relationship with the scripture. So you're trying to make the scriptures say what you wanted to say to satisfy what you wanted to mean. I already know that. I've done that before. God can take one word and he can give a different definition to it all, all and it still mean the same thing. Are y'all following me now? He says, come to me because I want to make you a better you. But you can't do it without me. Now, this is why he said, come to me, because you're going to go through things in life called spiritual warfare. Whether you understand it or not, you're going to go through spiritual warfare, which means why is it spiritual? 
Because you are spirit. God created you spirit first. So God speaks to the spirit in you. Since it's spiritual, you're going to go through what we call spiritual warfare. There is something in this earth called spirits, and they have an assignment. Y'all don't hear me. Paul writes to the church, and he warns the church that you're going to enter spiritual warfare. And he says, the weapons of your warfare. Now, thanks to God, because you're going through life, you better be weaponized to go through. You better have the right weapons to fight the right battles. Because sometimes you fight what's not written, meant for you to fight. You're getting upset with folk that's not meant for you to get upset with. You're angry with people that you didn't mean to. You shouldn't be angry with those folk. The spirits of this earth are called principalities, rulers of darkness. They have an assignment. Do you know what their assignment is? Their assignment is to find Christians. Those of you who confess that Jesus is your Lord and you'll say, their assignment is to find you. And you know what they do when they find you? They test you. Confess salvation and see, don't you enter some storms. Because they're looking for you because you are opposition to their plan. Their strategy is to kill, steal, and to destroy. God says, I have given you the power because I'm giving you life so you can have life more abundantly. So Jesus brings the abundant life that he created for you in your purpose that you can live an abundant life in Christ Jesus. So Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 6, verse 12, I'm sorry, look. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Y'all there? Ephesians chapter 6, 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come here, baby. So y'all can see. This is flesh and blood. People. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is not my assignment to fight with her. And to be confrontational with her. Even when she do some things to me to make me say, you know what? Oh, I do things to her and she said, you know what? I don't wrestle with her. But if I don't know the scriptures, I will wrestle with her. Mm -hmm. I will get in confrontations with her. I will say things, mean things to her, and she would say mean things to me because I'm wrestling with flesh and blood. But he says, you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. You're wrestling with principalities and spirits. So instead of me wrestling with her, see, some of you get to the point where you got to convince yourself that I'm going to win. And you're not going to take advantage of me. And I'm not going to let you talk to me any kind of way. I'm a man or I'm a woman. And so you say things to flesh and blood. And flesh and blood turns back around and say things to you. And the next thing you know, you are upset with one another. That's right. That's right. That's right. Flesh and blood. What you got to stop fighting with is the flesh and blood and see the spirit realm. The spirit realm consists of spirits. Mm. And you are a spirit that God created in the beginning. And when he speaks to you, he's speaking to your spirit. That's why you have to be born again. So that you take on the spirit of Christ. So when Christ speaks, your spirit can hear and your spirit can agree. What is he saying? You have ears to hear, but you can't hear me. You have eyes to see, but you can't see me. But when God opens up your heart and you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you take on a different spirit. So we're taking on the spirit of Christ. He has already, listen, saints, God has already allowed Jesus to already defeat what you think you got to fight. 
Your fight has already been won. You got to know that you're a conqueror. You got to know that you're a winner. You got to know that you're an overcomer. You don't have to take things in your own hand. Jesus took the nails in his hand, so you don't have to take things in your hand. Are y'all hearing me? So this right here, come here, baby, come here. So thanks to God, look at this. Look, please. When somebody get on your nerves, somebody say something to you in a McDonald's or Wendy's or wherever you go dine, don't get upset with that person. It's a spirit operating in that person, whether they know it or not, that spirit is in operation. Can I tell you that the Bible says that the devils run around seeking who they can find, that they can enter in and influence their lives with their strategy. So instead of me fussing with my wife and fighting with my wife, I need to rebuke the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit. Now, now listen, be careful with this. This is powerful. Because what could happen if you get the wrong revelation? I command that spirit to come out. And then she turned around and said, I command that spirit to come out. So both of you are now saying, I command the spirit, come out. I command the spirit of you, come out. I command, thanks to God, that is not how that works. You don't use the scripture against one another. You use the principle of the word of God to get the results that the word says you should have. So you speak to the spirit. What is that spirit? It's a confusing spirit. I don't understand you, baby. There's a confusing spirit trying to invade our conversation so it can leave me with a, listen, no understanding. So if I don't have understanding, I'm going to misrepresent the truth and I'm going to be, listen, my outcome is going to be underestimated because I don't understand. So I walk out mad at her. When I shouldn't be mad at her. I should be mad at the spirit. Now watch this, thanks to God. The Bible says he walks around lurking. He's right here, right now. Trying to see if you'll give him occupation. If you'll give him occupancy, he'll take it. So you got to guard against that. See, thanks to God, when you get saved and you were cursing, that was the adversary. Principality influence you to be more convincing by cussing. Oh, there's a meaning to cussing. Don't y'all look at me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all, most of y'all in here do some cussing. I right, look at me like, ah, what? But you don't be willing to look at Thanks to God. Don't, don't play with me. One of, one of Jesus' right hand men, one of them, one of his right hand men was called Peter. Peter was his best servant. Peter had a problem. If you made Peter mad, Peter would cut you. And if he didn't cut you, he would cuss you out. Don't you tell me we don't have no cussing Christians. That don't authorize you all to cuss. (laughs) But he says, put away all corrupt communications. All. See, you you can't say, I'm walking... In the spirit of God, in truth, and sometimes cussing. Come on now. Come on. Well, they made me mad. Yeah. The spirit made you angry. So if, she's, if you're angry, it's not because of her. It's because of the spirit that's meant opportunity, that had an opportunity to come in that situation and turn that situation into something that you could have controlled, but you didn't control it because you got upset because you were walking from flesh to flesh. Becoming a better me. The adversary is challenging you to see if you're going to become better. Yes, yes. Well, every time God gives you an opportunity to become better, what do you do with it? Mm, mm. Well, hold on for a second. Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> well, wait a minute. That's, I, here's the opportunity to become better. Uh-huh. Well, who you think you're talking to? Man, I'm saved, born again, sanctified, carry the word of God, fire baptized, all of that craziness you're talking about, all that religiosity you're throwing out there, and the devil sitting there saying, oh, oh, I got me one. Oh, I got me one. Oh, I got me one. 
And then we give him place. And this is what I said. You're wrestling against principalities and rulers of darkness. You're not fighting with people. Thanks to God, look at me. Stop fighting with people. Shut that door today and say, you are spirit, and this thing is spiritual, and I'm going to deal with this in the spirit realm because the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for pulling down strongholds. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm learning something today. I'm learning something today. Now, I, I knew this before. Come on, tell them. Say, I knew it before. I knew it before. But there's something about me that I'm underdeveloped. Now, am I talking right today? I'm underdeveloped in that area. Listen, if I met someone and they were just cussing all the time, and I do, I know some, but they've been working on that cussing. And they don't cuss as much every now and then want to snip up. I don't condemn him for that. I say, well, praise the Lord. He's working on you, brother. God is not through with you yet. But if I'm preaching the word of God, you constantly cussing at the same rate you were cussing before. And then added some more to assist that. You done graduated to another class of cussing. That's a problem. That's a problem. And then you say stuff like, forgive me, I ain't really mean to say it yet. <laughs> yes, you did mean to say that because you were trying to convince that person of your truth. You know, D-A-M is not a bad word. Because I could tell you to bring me my damn pictures. Now, y'all said, that's cussing. But what if I was at the Hoover Dam and I took pictures at the Hoover Dam? And I said, well, bring me my damn pictures. Those are the pictures of the dam. But you don't use that word like that. Look, I was down at the Hoover Dam, you know, enjoying myself, and I went into the restaurant. And the menu that they had it had a hot dog. But in front of the hot dog, that was D-A-M. Because it, it was at Hoover Dam. So it was a D-A-M hot dog, D-A-M hamburger, D-A-M. And so I said, just give me a hot dog. And the man said, we don't sell just hot dogs. I said, what do you sell? He said, look at the sign. I say, I don't want one of those. I just want a hot dog. <laughs> Conviction came in. I'm not going to say that. It, it, they don't sell them like that. And you go to the grocery store, it says hot dogs. It's not on label, no, D-A-M, hot dog. So I'm not going to ask for one. But I know folk who don't have a problem with it. That's right, man. Give me one of those hot dogs and one of them hamburgers, one of those fries. <laughs> Thanks to God, there is a, there's a decorum about the spirit realm. That you don't have to adjust to everything because everybody's doing that. Because they say that, you don't have to say that. Because they do that, you don't have to do that. Learn from what God is saying. I want you to become a better you. So come unto me and learn from me. For the weapons of your warfare are not carnal. So in other words, saints of God, he said, stop being carnal. Stop, stop being carnal is what he's saying. Be, 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 be faithful in what you're doing according to God's word. Yes. Is this happening to anybody? Yes. Because I tell you what, the next time your supervisor makes you upset, just go in the restroom. Right. Joe, I got to teach you, man, more about prayer. Joe, you just can't say stuff. Yeah. Off the cuff. Yeah. Thanks to God. Listen to me. I wouldn't be saying this to you if God wasn't telling me to. You got to stop saying stuff off the cuff. And you got to remember to be a better you, you got to start being better at what you do. Is that a good word? I'm becoming a better me. So our real battle is with demons and spirit, with, and listen, demonic spirits, because they are working through people. Barbara, thanks to God, all of you, listen. I go in my house, and I sometimes walk through the house and just pray through the rooms. Let me tell you why. Because sometimes when I go out and I come back in, I got stuff on me. And guess what? I bring that stuff home. 
One of the things about an eagle when he flies, he flies towards the sun. The S-U-N. He flies towards the sun because the more he flies towards the sun, the more power God gives him to rise up. And as he's rising up to the sun rays, all the debris, now stay with me, saints, all the debris that he's picked up on his wings. I've been reading up on this, on this eagle. The more stuff he picks up on his wing, it makes him heavy. It makes him heavy. He can't soar and can't move. But when he starts flying, stay with me, saints, there's something in here for you. When he starts flying towards the sun, S-U-N, the heat rays begin to burn on his wings. And the weight that's on his wings, it begins to dissipate because the sun rays are burning it off. He looks into the sun and the rays of the sun begin to clear his eyesight because the eagle is the only bird that can look directly into the sun. Now, while he's rising up, the higher he gets, the stronger the wind. The, it, it, the wings of the eagle are easy to glide because now the wings of God is holding him up. That makes the eagle be able to soar. The higher he goes, the longer he soars. Mount up with wings like an eagle. God allows us. Wings of an eagle. When we come into the presence of the Lord, he says, mount over wings like an eagle. When we come closer to God, the closer we get to God, the better our relationship is with him. And the closer you get to God, the more heat you'll reveal from the anointing. And the anointing of the power of the anointing begins to break off those things on your life. You become to purify you and the weight becomes lighter and lighter because the Holy Spirit is doing the work. So as the eagle looks into the sun, directly into the sun, we who believe to walk with God, we can look directly into the sun. Y'all don't get this. I'm not talking about looking directly into the sun, S-U-N. I'm talking about looking directly into the sun, S-O-N. Because when you look into the sun, the sun and the power that's in him will rip, rip off of that stuff of your life and cause you to soar high like an eagle because the higher you go, the higher you climb, the more grace is on your life. It is the grace of God that gives us the ability to do what we do. And you got to have what we call a burnout moment. Don't you run away from burnout moments. You need to get burnt out. You need things got to burn out of you. You need to soar high so God can burn stuff off of you and burn things inside of you. Amen. The closer... You get to God, the stronger your relationship with God. Because when you fellowship with God, listen to me, fellowship is important. Because if you don't fellowship, you don't have relationship. The more fellowship you have, the greater your relationship with God. When you fellowship with God in prayer, fellowship with God in the word, listen, don't lose desire, ambition, and imagination. Desire is what? I told you all this before. Yeah. If you're going to become a better you, you got to have imagination. Yeah. you got to have ambition. Yeah. you got to have desire. Yeah. Desire is the appetite to act. Yeah. Ambition is the drive to succeed. Yeah. Imagination is the possibility to pursue. And if you're not pursuing anything, where is your imagination? All things are possible for those who believe. So God tells us we, have, we need to have imagination because what imagination does. Imagination brings creativity. If you can imagine a thing, God can do the thing. Can you imagine it? If you can imagine, God can do it. Because if that's part of your purpose and your destiny, God waits for you to come. Cast down all imagination, every hot thing that exalted itself against God, but he did not tell you not to have imagination. 
if it comes against God, opposing God and his rule of law, then that's not the imagination he wants you to have. He wants you to imagine. You want to see your greatness, you better have some imagination. You want to see you soar high, you better have some imagination. People who buy houses have an imagination of the house they want to buy. Am I talking right? Nobody just walks in the house and says, that's it. They have an imagination of what they want because they're looking for what they imagine because it's going to be theirs. So listen, ambition, drive. Desire, act. Imagination, pursue. To become a better you. Stop fighting with things that's not leading your life anywhere. Because once you finish the fight, it's still right there in front of you. Stop fighting people and fight the spirit of the thing. See, thanks to God, I'm going to close with this because I had to turn the message in another direction only because of time. But let me tell you something. I come to church because I want to. I serve God because I want to. I, I, I enter into praise and worship because I want to. I'd rather serve God because I want to than have to pray to him because I have to. Y'all didn't get what I said. I'd rather do it because I want to not because I have to. See, certain things in your life is going to put you in a place where you have to. Because once a doctor comes to the place and says, I don't know what else to do. I done done Jason all I know to do. Everything in the medical field I have tried, it didn't work. I need a resolution. The doctors can't help me. Now I got to go pray. But what happens when I have a lifestyle because I want to pray? What happens when I make those deposits of my prayers that it puts me in position to make a withdrawal? How can you go to the bank and make a withdrawal when you put nothing in? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? How can I expect the word of God to work in my life or work in my life when I'm not applying the word of God in my life? If you went to a bank and tried to make a withdrawal from that bank and you stayed in that line and said, I'm not leaving until you give me a dep- give me some money. But they don't have no account on you. They don't have your name on the books. They don't have nothing in you. And you outside the window fussing at the people saying, you're going to give me some money. Y'all got some imagination so you can know what's going to happen next. That same person that's sitting out there that's telling me to bring me some money. You're going to give me some money. I ain't leaving until you give me some money. He's going to see a blue vehicle come up with some red lights, blue lights. And they're going to get out their car and they're going to go over to him and ask him to move his car and come on to the cycle. We want to talk to you and see what your mental status is. So you don't, listen, going to, to withdraw from the kingdom of heaven, you need to make deposits. Why ask God for something when you haven't made any deposits? A young lady wasn't feeling well in the service today. And they told me. I said, where is she? They told me. I make deposits for prayer. So when I call on God and I ask God, he says, what sort of things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, you should have them. I make deposits in prayer. I spend time in prayer. Last night I was praying by my bed at nighttime, dark room, dark, and my wife thought I was trying to read my, 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 um, my iPad or my phone, so she'd come over and turn the light on, and then she'd see me on kneeling beside the bed just praying, so she cut the light back off. I was like, woman, I'm being in the presence of the Lord. I'm trying to get something done. I need to hear from heaven about something. I should have been in the bed 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. But I'm on those knees because I'm saying I need to hear something from God. How many of y'all would get up out your bed and say, you know what? I need to hear something from heaven. God, I've been doing something this way and it's not working. I need to hear from heaven. I don't care if it's 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. If the Spirit of God move on me to pray, I'm getting down to pray. Because when God calls, you answer. So when I heard about the young lady 
I said, let's go. Where is she? So I went in the room, and I said, what's wrong? And they told me. And I prayed for what was wrong. And I asked God to intervene. She's in the service now. She's doing well. She's fine. Now watch this, thanks to God. Watch this. What I should have done, I should have said, elders, go in the room back there with that daughter and join them in prayer. And then pray for that deliverance and bring her back into service because I need to be in the house. Are y'all following what I'm saying? But I can't call on you if you don't make deposits. I can't outreach to you if you're not prepared. So to becoming the better you is you preparing yourself to be better. And what? In every area of my life. Make deposits, thanks of God, that puts you in position to make withdrawals. And you have a right to receive from the kingdom of heaven when you are making deposits in the kingdom of heaven. God bless you, thanks of God. Becoming a better you on purpose. Doing what is necessary for you to become a better you on purpose. It is by design and because of want I do these things, not because I have to. There's a word in the house that I want you all to hear this morning, a prophetic word, just to encourage you to go deeper in your relationship with God. Thanks to God, if you have to walk this by yourself, without your family, without your wife, without your husband, don't you stop walking. Because let me tell you something, they'll catch up with you. Are you listening to me? They will catch up with you because God is faithful to what he said. He says, I save your whole household. You walk saved and you walk upright. Watch God do the rest. But don't deny the power of God in your life because somebody else is not living up to the standard. You walk the standard and watch God do the rest for your house because some, some fights are not yours to fight. And you need to stop fighting and let God do the fighting for you. But make deposits so that when you say God come, he comes because you are one of his that's walking up rightly before him. And what? No good thing will he hold, will he withhold from you if you're walking up rightly before him. There's a word I want you to hear today. So, Sister Tish, come and let's hear this word that the Lord gave us during the conference. I want you to hear this. And we're going to pray, and then we're going to dismiss the service. Thank you also for being so patient today with me and hearing the word that I have given you today. This is all God. God wants the best for you, and he wants you to be your best. So leaving the service today, become the best and the better person that God has purposed you to be. Know that, that you are walking in the line of your purpose and fulfilling your destiny. Amen? So, Sister Tish, if you'll come. Yes. Yes. The one that I, you sent to me from the conference, I want you all to hear this word. Come on, lift your hands up to the Lord because I want you to be released. This is all about releasing. Everybody in here is about releasing. I want you to be released in this because God is speaking. We are hearing and we are releasing the word of God. Take your hands down, because I know what you Once she's finished the decree, we're going to accept it. Go ahead. So I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua 
exponential increase in your abilities. Exponential increase in your abilities and opportunities by God's power working in you and through you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua that your mind and spiritual awareness is heightened now and it is renewed. Lift your hands to heaven. Go ahead, daughter. Read that I decree. decree and declare in the yeah. name of Yeshua that your mind and your spiritual awareness is heightened yes. and it is renewed as you walk into greater revelational authority. For the word says, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in the righteousness and true holiness. I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua that you will live under complete abundance, having all and needing nothing under Jehovah Jireh, our provider. For the Lord said, I shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth. I decree and declare in the name of Yeshua, may the overwhelming peace of God, the providence of peace that is entitled to you, that you take it completely, saturate your life, that the Lord will give you strength unto you, his people, and that the Lord will bless his people with peace. That is your entitlement and your providence. Amen. And Come Father, on. it's in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach the Christ. This prophetic Amen. utterance is sealed and the manifestation of your glory revealed. Amen. Let us thanks to our God. Say amen to that. Amen. <laughs> thanks to God. Father, we praise you for this service today. The prophetic words have been spoken over the house. And the people of God, Father, that are in the audience, oh, Father in heaven, virtually, as well as those that are in the house. We pray, Father, that God, what has been said, spoken, and enjoyed this day as worship will stay with us all week long as we are walking this out with you, becoming perfect in all of our ways, only because the word is activated in our lives and that grace, mercy, and truth do follow us all the days of our lives. So, Father, we thank you and give you praise and honor today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you'll be seated just one second, and I'm going to dismiss us. I want to say to the people of God who are here, thank you so much for coming. Seriously, thank you so much for coming. We're a little over today, over time today, but I want to thank Mother out of North Carolina for coming and being with us today. We have a young man in the audience who's 80 years old today. So we want to honor the man of God. This is his birthday today. He's 80 years old. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man of God. I know you have some things you want to praise the Lord about, but the service has ended, and I know you're going to take us to another service, so I don't want to give you the opportunity to tell me. <laughs> Amen. Listen, everybody here born again? Everybody here saved? I'm going to dismiss the service, so I just need to get a witness. Everybody here born again? Everybody here saved? If you don't lift your hand, don't worry about it. I'll see you after church. I won't put, I will not embarrass you up here. And so don't raise your hand if you're not either. Everybody born again? Everybody saved? I just baptized you. Why you don't have your hand up? I was like, we just baptized you a few weeks ago. Look, you ain't saved no more. <laughs> I'm going to try this again. Everybody saved in the house? That makes it easy for me. All right. I see you. Then amen. I'll, now, one more degree. Are all of y'all living right? Uh, come on, let me see the hands. All of you living right. All right, and I'm seeing hands go down, and I'm saying, but that's okay. Okay, God, God sees. We see too, so we know how to pray. Amen? All of you joined to a church somewhere. Let me see your hands. Join to a church somewhere. You're not joined to a church nowhere? I see hands up, and I don't see hands down. Okay, that's good. I got you. I got an assignment on my life. We'll, we'll work it out. Come on, let's stand. Let's go home. Tell your neighbor this morning. Say, neighbor, thank you for fellowshipping with me today. This was a good time for me to spend my time it's with you. All right. Lift your hands unto the Lord. Danielle Sally, minister, please come. Dismiss us in for the church. This is a, a
That's all I keep hearing her name all week. Danielle Sound. She did a phenomenal job on Saturday. The people were so blessed that their women's ministry is going to invite her back again. And we all, the women of Redeeming Life, are going to go down with her when she goes. Oh, bless the Lord. Amen. All right, so if you bow your heads. Father God, we worship you and we honor you, Father. We thank you for being long-suffering, kind. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, Father. We thank you for this awesome service, Father. It was anointed and the word was blessed. And I thank you that all the people were blessed. Now I ask that you take us to our separate destinations safely and that we have an excellent week. And we will come back again next Sunday to do it all over again. And exalt your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thanks to God. God bless you. Before ending the service, we have a mandate in our lives, and that mandate is just do the words. Jerry. Hello, everyone. Is this your first time visiting? Welcome, and thank you for coming to Redeeming Life Ministries International. We are so glad you came. Check out what's happening now. Family and Friends Day, Sunday, August 25th, is around the corner. For preparation purposes, please register you, your family, and your friends in the church app for this free event. All families are encouraged to bring a cooler with water and non-alcoholic beverages to share. Volunteers are also needed, so go to the Fam Day Volunteer Registration page and lend a hand. We need you. RSVP by Wednesday, August 21st. The Real Love Getaway 2024 exclusive happens October 17th through the 19th. Join them at the Hyatt Regency Chesapeake Bay Resort in Cambridge, Maryland. Registration is $150 per couple and the room rate is $259 per night plus tax. Make your reservations today. Don't forget to visit our social media pages and check out our email, highlights, and texts to stay informed.